Okay, uh, our next podcast is going to go into um, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the ability that uh, plants and algaes um, and other photosynthetic organisms have of capturing energy. Basically, this is a process that it uh, converts solar energy into chemical energy. Um, now, we um, the only organisms that use these are autotrophic organisms. Autotrophs are those that can survive without eating anything derived from other organisms. So they have the ability to produce their own food, makes their own food, autotrophs. Um, so when we talk about photosynthetic photosynthesis, organisms that uh, use that, we can refer to those as photoautotrophs. Uh, there are some organisms that can survive without that process. They use a similar process uh, called um, chemiosmosis. Um, but this, we have a lot of different types of photosynthetic organisms. Of course, we think of plants when we think of photosynthesis, but we also have algaes, multicellular and single-celled algaes, and there is some um, bacteria. Uh, certain types of bacteria are photosynthetic. Um, in the process of photosynthesis, um, the plant uh, converts light energy into chemical energy, and that chemical energy is in the bonds of molecules that they can use uh, then as fuel for metabolism in their uh, plant body. The site at which this takes place is in the chloroplast. We've talked about the different organelles in the cell, and chloroplast are the organelles in plants and in photosynthetic organisms, and this is uh, where it takes place. Now, most of these are found in the leaves, uh, and um, they get, um, basically the plant gets this green color from a pigment that's in these chloroplasts. Chlorophyll is the pigment, and um, they um, are found in the middle of the leaf in the mesophyll. So let's look at this diagram. This shows where the location of these cells are. So here we have a leaf here. We show a cross section right here. And right in there is where more most of the chloroplasts are located is right there in the, it's called the mesophyll. That actually means middle of leaf. Phil means leaf, meso means middle, middle of the leaf. All right, so we look at one of these chloroplasts, pull one out right here. Here's a microscopic view of a, of a, uh, of a mesophyll cell right here. And then we can pull out. So this is the cell uh, itself. And then the chloroplast, we can look at. That's one chloroplast. And we can look at it in this diagram to see more of its structure. Uh, and this shows down here at the bottom, it shows a um, electron microscopic view of what one of these chloroplasts actually looks like. But this figure shows us a better diagram in explaining it. So the chloroplast has a double membrane. So we can see that right there. So a double membrane. And inside are these units that collect the solar energy and it, are, are going to be the site for uh, the... Um, uh, chemical reactions of photosynthesis. Uh, these structures inside are called thylakoids, and a stack of these thylakoids are called grana. All right, and um, so the thylakoids are like each one of these little sections that are stacked up here. An analogy that's usually given in explaining thylakoids and granum are uh, thylakoids are like coins and if you stack a bunch of coins together, um, then you get uh, that that whole stack would be referred to as a granule. Each individual coin would be a thylakoid. Or sometimes people explain it like a stack of pancakes. So if you have one pancake, that's what a thylakoid is. And you stack uh, a bunch of them up, and um, the stack of pancakes would be analogous to the granum. All right, 
that's going to be the site that we'll look at for these reactions um, that we're going to talk about. So in um, photosynthesis, we have a number of things that, that take place for the um, uh, chemical reactions to proceed. Okay, uh, kind of a summary of what all takes place, or basically kind of what um, starts the reaction process and what is the ultimate outcome. So in this, we have uh, some simple molecules, carbon dioxide and water. We have our light energy. Those go through a series of steps or degradations. And then uh, we have the bonding and forming of our um, carbohydrate molecule or sugar. So this right here is produced uh, as the outcome. And this is going to fuel these bonds that are in here are going to fuel um, the uh, plant. Um, in the process of splitting these molecules, reconfiguring them, we have a byproduct of oxygen and water. So that's kind of a summary. We're going to look at the steps of that. Now we split water. Water is split and this shows uh, kind of some of the reactants and products. So we start with these right here. We have uh, our carbon and oxygen are split. The water is split uh, here. The hydrogens go over here and form part of the sugar. So that's uh, some of what's taking place. Now this is photosynthesis is a redox reaction. We talked about that when we looked at uh, cell respiration. Uh, photosynthesis as well is a uh, redox reaction. Um, meaning that it is uh, oxidation and reduction where we have loss of electrons and gaining of electrons in the uh, process. So, um, and we, but we can divide um, photosynthesis up into two steps. Uh, the two steps are though some of them require light and some uh, do not require light. And um, so we're going to look at each one of those. Okay, the, um, the uh, light reactions is sometimes called the um, light dependent reactions. Um, and then the, um, or the photo part, the synthesis part, the combining of the, uh, the um, simple uh, elements to form our, our larger molecules is called the Calvin cycle. Um, so in the first part, this reaction, these reactions take place um, in the thylakoids and it splits the water, releases oxygen, reduces NAD. So this is one of the electron uh, carriers. And so that means it's going to pick up an electron, reduces, is adding an electron. Uh, the NAD will pick up, NADP will pick up a hydrogen and it generates some ATP for, in the uh, phosphorylation. So here's a diagram that explains this. So uh, this is our chloroplast here, two membranes, and we have light energy that comes in. So these reactions require light. We have water that comes in and we have... Um, uh, our electron carrier comes in and ADP comes in and a free phosphate. And what we have coming out is ATP is produced from this. We have NADPH, which is pick, picking up a hydrogen from water. Here's our carrier. That's going to be an important um, electron right here. And we have our light energy and we have oxygen that's given off as a byproduct. So these are called the light reactions. The um, next set of reactions are, is called the Calvin cycle, and it's going to use this ATP and the electron carrier that's right here. So the ATP comes in, and we have a series of reactions that, that are going to convert this carbon and the carbon dioxide into our sugar. And so in that process, that's what we have that comes out. We have in ratio of one carbon we have, for every one carbon, we have two hydrogens and one oxygen that's given off. So we have our, our sugar right here. All right, so that's the two broad steps, the uh, light reactions and the light, um, um, or the Calvin cycle. Or this, sometimes this is called light independent reactions or the dark reactions. 
um, just a way of explaining that light is not required for these reactions to occur. These are re referred to as the light reactions. Okay. Um, so light is what fuels this um, reaction or starts it. We have light can be described in waves or pigments. Certain light waves are absorbed in, uh, in these thylakoids and um, get the process started. Other um, wavelengths are reflected off and not used. Now in our chloroplasts, we have series of these reactions, a series of these thylakoids or granums and some of these are going to be those that absorb the light and some that don't. And um, a grouping of these are called photosystems. So a photosystem is um, it's like a reaction center or complex of these thylakoids uh, that are light harvesting complexes. And um, there's two of them. There's photosystem one and two. And actually, light comes into photosystem two first. And it's the best at absorbing the, the type of light that is required. Uh, and um, so photosystem one is um, um, absorbs at a wavelength of about two, uh, 700 nanometers. And then photosystem two function is is what functions first and is best at absorbing at about 680 uh, nanometers. So these photosystems um, are um, light harvesting units. So we could describe these. And then um, uh, electron chains are set up in these to actually produce the um, ATPs. So here shows a diagram of uh, our light harvesting units, photosystem two and photosystem one. So here we have our um, hydrogen or our waters coming in. Uh, these are the pigments picking up, and um, the hydrogens that are stripped away set up a are set up here, and they set up an electron chain that feeds over to the next photosystem, uh, and then um, photosystem one, and then again. Uh, hydrogen set up an electron chain so we can see that and then our production of ATP comes from that electron chain so there's our photon here in this uh, analogy we have our light pigment photo is called a photon and it hits there and energizes these electrons sets up this chain and the same thing happens in photosystem one now the Calvin cycle is um, uses this ATP. So it uses this ATP and the uh, electron carriers um, to convert the carbon and carbon dioxide to sugar. So we have carbon fixation, we have reduction that's taking place, and we have the production of our uh, three carbon sugar uh, from three carbon dioxides. And so these amass together to form um, our sugars in in um, in the Calvin cycle is what that's referred to as. Okay, so here's a couple of um, reviews of photosynthesis. Energy entering the chloroplast of sunlight gets stored as chemical energy in organic compounds, and then the sugar made in the in the chloroplast supplies chemical energy. <laughs> and the carbon skeleton to produce the um, organic molecules of the cell. So this is going to make the food, and then the food is going to be used to produce um, structures in the cell. And um, in addition to food, photosynthesis produces oxygen in our atmosphere. So that byproduct of uh, oxygen through photosynthesis is used by respiring organisms like ourselves in um, our biosphere. Okay, so that's where our lecture on photosynthesis ends.